Good evening. Good evening. Um, it's a blessing to be with you this Wednesday. Um, and God is good, man. I'm so excited to um, just spend some time with him. Hopefully you are as well. You're excited to um, just get in his word and, and to uh, see what he has in store for us. Um, so welcome, Facebook family. Welcome, Mission Ebenezer. Um, it's going to be a, a, a challenging opportunity for us um, this evening. And, um, you know, I just pray and, and, and hope that as mature believers, um, as mature Christians, um, that we could receive, uh, that we could hear, that we can receive, and we can apply. Um, God's word. Okay. That is my prayer. Okay. So um, strap up and um, I'm looking forward to, to seeing what God has uh, for us. Let's, let's go before the Lord in prayer. Um, bow your heads um, and let's uh, approach him in the name of Jesus. Well, Father God, we love you. We thank you. Uh, we uh, surrender ourselves to you. We ask and pray, Lord, that you will be present with us um, this evening um, as you have in this day. Lord, I decrease that way you may increase and have your complete and perfect way. Father, I ask that you will grace the hearers of your word. I pray, Father God, that your word will go forth. And that they will hear your words, not my voice. I thank you, Father, for this time, this opportunity, Lord, to fellowship, to praise you, to honor you, to glorify you, to be reminded of how good you are. So again, we thank you for this day and this opportunity, Lord. And may you and you alone. Um, be praised and glorified and honored. And it's in your blessing, Holy Son, Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Uh, this evening, we're going to be going through uh, Proverbs 26, or excuse me, Proverbs 29. And um, there are um, five particular scriptures um, that are highlighted um, for me that the Lord kind of highlighted. And, and I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be honest, church. I'm going to be honest, family. Um, you know, today was a struggle for me. It was a struggle. Um, just as I'm diving in God's word, as I'm um, just dealing with life and the day and the news and all the different things, it was a struggle for me today. And I think it's important for us to be honest with one another and to not um, carry this, this facade to carry this, this, uh, this mind frame and state that, you know, because we are believers and we Christians, I'm a pastor titles and whatever it may be that, that we don't hurt, that we don't have these days and, um, that we don't feel that's not true. And that's not right. And I don't want to mislead anybody or have anyone, um, uh, you know, for us to, to, to mislead people thinking because, you know, we are believers that, that, that we don't hurt and, and that, um, things don't bother us. This is, that's a lie. And, and I'm not going to carry that, um, you know, that, that stance, you know, for myself, um, in, in no way, shape or form. So, you know, I had a, a coach friend of mine, um, I was talking to today and, and, um, he heard it in my voice. And he said, uh, he said, what's wrong? He said, you're usually, you know, kind of upbeat and chipper. He said, I, I hear, you know, just some, something is, you're dealing with something. And I said, yeah, I am. I said, you know, it's tough. Today is a tough day uh, for me um, and, and all that we're dealing with. And um, he proceeded to, to kind of say, you know, well, you know, I've never seen you like this. And the Lord gave me this image of, of a candle you know, a candle being lit and, and 
the wind passes by the candle, it's brightly lit. But when the wind passes by the candle, it doesn't it doesn't make the candle go out. But it takes down the flame just for a second before it builds back up to where it is. And sometimes that's how life is and the things that we deal with that it might take. It might take a little bit off of us or out of us for a second until we come back, until we are strengthened back in the Lord. And we and we are, you know, kind of prayed up and, and, and dealing with the things that are before us. So, um, you know, I just I just again, I just wanted to state that because it's important for me to be honest um, with us and, and with one another. Um, you know, the the, the situation um, that's taking place. Um, you know, in Wisconsin, um, you know, hope, I think we all probably have heard or read or saw um, that. And, you know, um, that's something that, you know, again, it's like, here we go again. Um, but what are we going to do with it? You see the sports world standing up, speaking out. We see them stopping games and, and things of that nature. But what about us, the church, the believer, the Christians? What are we doing? Are we going to wait for the narrative to be built and hijacked and then not stand and say, oh, no, well, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't follow behind that. When we're supposed to be the lead in the front. That's who God called us to be. And, and ironically, in this particular chapter in Proverbs, it speaks even of this. Proverbs 7, Proverbs 29, 7 says this. The righteous cares about justice for the poor, but the wicked have no concern. Us that are considered righteous, we should be caring about justice for the poor. And I don't want us to think about poor as only in in poverty state or poverty sense. There are many different elements to poor. You can be poor in spirit. Um, you can be poor physically, poor socially, poor emo- uh, uh, emotionally, poor mentally. So don't just look at that word as a financial reality. Yes, it is also attached to being poor financially. But there are so many other areas in our lives in which we could be poor. And I don't want us to lose sight of that. In the reality, he said the righteous cares about the poor. He says the righteous care about justice, justice. The God that we serve, he is a God of righteousness and justice. He said he cares about justice for the poor, but the wicked have no such concern. Let that not be us. Don't let a title as Christian fool us because Christian means to be Christ-like. What was he like? Don't just hold it as a title. I'm Christian, but your actions and the fruit of your labor shows that you have no concern. That your text and your talk and your tone is one of hate, not love. That's not who we serve. That's not being Christian. That's not being Christ-like. It's not who we are called and who we are supposed to be. Another scripture about being poor in spirit. Matthew 5, 3 specifically says it. it, says, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Now, 
this particular verse where it talks about being poor in spirit, you can almost substitute poor for humble. But think about someone who is rich and all of a sudden loses their financial gain, their financial prosperity, and are now in a position of need. Think about the humility that now accompanies that person. It's important that we look through these things. Now we truly really examine and not just sit on it on the words without getting depth and full meaning of what is being said and stated. Because we all have this, this mental image of poor, like, oh, okay, yeah, you know, the homeless guy, he's poor. He might be poor physically, but might be more spiritually rich than you and me. So it's important for us to, to not judge in this aspect. The second scripture. Proverbs 29, 13. It says, the poor and the oppressor have this in common. The Lord gives sight to the eyes of both. Hmm. Here, that, here it is. It says that the poor and the oppressor have this in common. The Lord gives sight to the eyes of both. Ain't that something? When you think about it, for for the one who's who's the oppressor, he knows exactly what he's doing. He sees the lowly state of the one who he is oppressing and taking advantage of it. The one who is being oppressed is seeing that this person does not respect him as a person. That he's not being treated as equal. That he's not being treated as such, as God created all of us. He sees it. We're... This scripture reminds us that none of us are blind to what is happening right before our eyes. So let's not pretend that we're blind with the things that we see. We clearly see when something is right and when something is wrong. And not try to justify it or make sense for it to fit into a certain box that makes us feel comfortable, to make you feel comfortable to accept the reality of what is happening right before your eyes. We're not blind. So let's not act like we're blind. We're also not mute. Don't be afraid to say something. See wrong, say something about the wrong. For that is the right thing to do. The right thing to do. The wrong thing is to have no concern. It don't bother me and my family. We good. I get to go back home. Man, man, I saw that. I saw what happened. Man, he should have did this. He should have did that. Oh, well. You go home and you eat your merry little dinner and it's all good because y'all good. This is not who we are supposed to be. What if God would have done that with you in your situation? Hey, you did that. Hey. 
I'm going to turn my back. Because we are supposed to be imitators of Christ, trying our best to imitate him. Think about your kids or your nieces or your nephews or or when you were little and you saw somebody bigger than you and, and they're doing something, you're, you're trying to imitate exactly what they're doing, right? Because it's, it's, it's cool to you. It's like, the man, it has your full, complete attention. You're captivated by it. And you're trying to do and hold the mannerisms and everything that that person is doing before you. You're practicing all of that stuff. You're practicing that move until you get it right. But when are we going to practice being righteous? When are we going to practice standing up, being showing justice, standing up for the poor? When are we going to practice showing love? When are we going to practice speaking? In a manner that glorifies the Lord. Acting in a manner that glorifies the Lord. When are we going to start practicing that? Instead of freestyling. That's not right. That's not of him. The third scripture. Proverbs 29, 16. When the wicked thrive, so does sin. But the righteous will see their downfall. It says, when the wicked thrive, so does sin. But the righteous will see their downfall. I think sometimes, you know, it's easy for us to say, you know, well, racism is a sin thing. It's sin. It's sin. True indeed. It is sin. Absolutely. Let me remind you of this. Sin is not a standalone thing. Sin doesn't perform by itself. Sin need a willing participant to actually sin. I've never seen a house robbed with nobody robbing the house. Show me that one. In order to sin, in order for there to be sin present, somebody has to carry that sin in. So when we sit up here talking about what racism is, you know, that's a sin thing. Absolutely. So who carried it in? Somebody carried it in. Who was the willing participant to carry it in? Sin is not a standalone thing. And when it says when the wicked thrive, so does sin. So when we see all this is happening, somebody is thriving right now. The wicked is thriving right now because sin is at an all-time high. But somebody is carrying it in. Not only are they carrying it in, they're carrying it out. This is why we got to check ourselves. We got to check ourselves. It was an old rhyme that said back in the day, you better check yourself before you wreck yourself. I ain't going to go into the rest, but that's the reality. You better check yourself before you wreck yourself. Because if you wait for somebody else to check you, ah, it might be too late. Might be too late. So again, I want you to remember that that sin is not a standalone thing. So stop just labeling things as oh, that's sin. You're right, it is. Who brought it in? Let's take it a step further. Okay, who committed that sin? Because as believers, as Christians, we just kind of throw this blanket statement out there, or you know, it's sin. Come on, let's tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. The whole truth, not partial. Because partial truth is not truth. If if you're going to withhold information, you're lying on purpose. So that can't be the truth. You got to be willing to say the whole truth and nothing but that. The fourth, 
It says, where there is no vision, this is a common one, where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. The law, talking about God's word, God's law, and how we live peaceably here. We should be the initiators in treating one another with love, dignity, care, respect, humility, having that should be us. But the reality, we want to point that out in the others that are not like us. Oh, we Pharisees and Sadducees, us. Oh, we Pharisees and Sadducees. We whitewashed tombs full of dead man's bones. Instead of living it ourselves, instead of initiating it ourselves, instead of starting it ourselves, we want to point out what others are not doing. That's whack. That's not the God that we serve. That's not what he told us to do. He said, where there's no vision. What's the vision? What is the vision that God has given us? Because when we try to fabricate our own vision, it has no legs to stand on. There is no foundation. I have no there there is no lungs to breathe, no air for it to 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 live on. So it dies out. The people perish. Because we're doing things that are outside of his will while we're claiming his name. We're doing things in his name. That does not define him. That does not glorify him. He said, but he that keepeth. Said, oh, happy is he. You can't steal my joy. Joy comes from the Lord. I can have I can be happy and I can rejoice in him, even in the midst of the turmoil, my hurt, me struggling today. In the midst of that, I can still say, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I know things are not right right now, but I know you on the case. Thank you, Jesus. But I got to do my part. You're going to do your part regardless of me or us. God is going to be God. But are you going to do what he called you to do? And are you going to do what you said you were going to do as a follower and a believer of Christ? So it's important. We better watch the things that come out of our mouths. Don't be so quick to say something that you're not quick to model and you're not quick to do. Watch what you store in your heart. Better constantly do inventory on that heart. And see what you're storing in there. Whether good or evil, it will come out. And then the, 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 the final scripture, the final scripture says this, uh, that I want to highlight tonight. Proverbs 29, 22. It says, an angry person stirs up conflict, 
and a hot-tempered person commits many sins. Now, I confess, I, I was angry. I was angry. But it's important for me to not allow my anger to turn into hot-headedness. The Bible reminds us to be slow to anger. It didn't say not to anger. It said be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. So he didn't avoid the conflict of, of anger being present, just not allowing anger to turn into hot-headedness. And for me personally, the only way I can do that is by holding on to his unchanging hand. Because the, the moment I let go of his hand and I start dealing with my emotions, remember, being poor, does not only, again, it's not talking about just a physical or, or financial thing. That's an emotional thing. That's a social thing. Once I let go of that hand, that anger can quickly turn into hot headedness because I used to be a hot head. Before I knew him, before I received him as my personal Lord and Savior. And how many of us can say that? How many of us are, are ready to look back into our past and see where he pulled us from? But I bet you this, you don't allow your past to define where you are now. You don't want to be judged by your past, what you did yesterday, 10 years ago. You don't want to be defined by that. But yeah, we want to define others by their past. Come on, man. Come on, church. We got to be better. And being angry. It is, an, it is a feeling. It's a natural thing that happens at times. Whether as, as a parent, if you've been, a, if you are a parent, you have been angry at your children before. If you are a wife, you have definitely been angry with your husbands. Okay. As a husband, you have never been, you have never been angry at your wife. Never. We don't get angry at our wives. <laughs> See, I just lie. I'm not going to do that. i buy that in the name of Jesus. Right. As, as people who have relationships with others, who have relationship with people, who do life with people, there are going to be times when we get disappointed. But it's what we allow and how we allow that disappointment to manifest and where we allow it to go. Right? Well, we, he says, do not go to sleep on your anger. Right? Because now I'm going to wake up angry. Pray that thing out. Hash that thing out. No matter how mad you were at each other, remind each other, I love you. We're going to get through this. You messed up. <laughs> Look at me, point at somebody else. No, don't do that, okay? The reality is, is simply, is how we apply. How we apply grace. How we apply love, patience, kindness, self-control. Do you sound familiar? I'm with the fruits of the spirit. We should be applying this in all that we do. This is the life of, of the believer. How do we apply the fruits of the spirit in all that we do? How do we apply the fruits of the spirit and how we deal with everybody that we deal with? With every situation that we see. It's important. But it let us be who we say we are. Define the term in your own life what it means to be Christian by his standards, not yours. Measure it. Am I doing what I'm supposed to be doing? Am I, am I representing him? 
Am I honoring him? Am I honoring you by what I'm doing? Let me not pretend to be blind because he gave us eyes to see. Let me not pretend to be mute. And oh, I forgot to say something in that moment. There's a scripture that comes to mind. Matthew 4, 24, and it says this. So his fame spread throughout all Syria. And they brought him all the sick, those afflicted with various diseases and pain, those oppressed by demons, epileptics, <laughs> those who were paralyzed, and it says he healed them all. So let me ask you this. Who are you bringing to Christ? Instead of talking about the person who is in that poor state, whether it's emotionally, socially, physically, psychologically. Why don't you bring them to Christ? Why don't you pray on their behalf? Instead of just talking about them being prayed on. It says the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. So we the righteous, our prayer should be availing much. We should be praying for people. Not just talking about them. Getting on verbal spats on this thing right here that we are right now on Facebook. Hide behind text words. Posting things to get an emotional response. Antagonizing. Instead of being encouraging. Healing. Hopeful. Finding common ground that we all can stand on. What is that? Where is that common ground? That common ground is in Jesus. And for those that don't know him, we should be introducing them to this common ground. We should be loving them too. Not just castrating them, calling them out, leaving them aside because they don't know. It was a time when we didn't know. What did, what, what did Jesus say on the cross? Forgive them, Father, for they do not know what they do. What about the ones that don't know what they're doing? Instead of just talking about them, let's pray for them. Let's love them too. Let's be, as Paul says, Living epistles. Let's be the living word. We've heard this expression before. You may be the only Jesus that somebody know. Well, I hope you look like him in your actions. Because we don't want to be giving people the wrong impression and the wrong visual of who he is. No, that's that wasn't Jesus. That was me. Those were my actions. I wasn't, I wasn't displaying Christ. I was displaying me. And we give them a bad rep because we choose to display our ugliness, our sin that we carried in and throw his name on top of it. And then that's what people see. Let's be better, church. Let's be better, church. That's not just Mission Ebenezer. I'm talking about the body of Christ. Let's be better, Mission Ebenezer. 
Now I'm talking to you. Let's be better. Let's choose to be a, a presence and an example here in this Southland, this South Bay. But first, let's choose to be an example here to our own members here, to one another. Let's practice here so when we go out there, we know how to respond and act. But let's practice. Let's start modeling what it looks like to be that, to do that here. So we can take it out there and give them what they need. So some of us may have been ruffled, but <laughs> our feathers ruffled. Some of us, this was confirmation. I'm reminded that the word, it cut and it convicts. That's what it does. So, amen. Let the word be the word. And I pray, I sincerely pray and hope that if we're going to attach and tie ourselves to him as our personal Lord and Savior, that we truly get to know who he is and what he was like and the things that he called for us to do and the things that he stood up for and who he called and created and designed us to be as followers, as the makeup of his body, his body, he's the head, we're the body, as the makeup of his body, who he designed, called, and created us to be. So again, my prayer is that you hear his word, that you receive his word, and now we go out and apply his word. Amen. Well, God bless you. Um, I'm going to pray us out. Um, if you got any prayer requests, you can type in your prayer requests. Um, we do look at them. We do pray over um, the things that you guys type out. Um, so um, don't be shy. Let's be real. Amen. Let's go before the Lord. Father God, we uh, thank you so much and we love you. Um, for who you are. We thank you for your infallible word. We thank you, Father God, for being the way, being the truth, and being the life. We thank you, Father God, for your love and your forgiveness, Lord Jesus. Lord, we pray against the injustices, Father God, that are present. As your word speaks for the righteous, Lord, may we be present. May we be a mouthpiece for the injustices of the poor. May we not shy away from responding to things that you would have us respond to. May we conduct and carry ourselves and fashion ourselves in love. Lead with love. Live in love. Speak in love. And dare us to hope. To hope and to trust in you, Lord God. For we know it is only you and you alone who provides the increase in our lives. So may we turn from our wicked ways, Father God. May we acknowledge you in all of our ways and not rely on our own understanding. May we humble ourselves, Father God, watching the things that we say and speak of others, Father God, not knowing the discouragement that we may cause others from coming to you. May we model you in a real way to real people who are looking for real solutions, 
real hope, a real God, which is you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Father God, as we have this time to pray for those, Father God, who have been dealing with the coronavirus, Lord God, our family members, Lord God. We pray, Father God, for the sick, the shut-in, Father God. We pray, Father God, for first responders and all the caregivers, Father God, for each and every family that has been affected, whether they have children who are distance learning at home while they're figuring out how to work, Father, we pray over our teachers, Lord God, who have this huge pressure upon them, Lord Jesus, to perform for us as parents. May we have grace, empathy, and support for them, Father God, for our children and all that they're giving and doing for them. Lord, we need you. We need you, Lord. Please forgive us for our sins, our transgressions and iniquities, Lord, that we have committed against you. Please forgive us for our transgressions and trespasses that we have committed against others, Lord Jesus. And may we forgive those who have trespassed against us, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. We praise and bless your holy name. In the matchless and mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray all these things. Amen. Well, God bless you. Um, we look forward to, uh, seeing you tune in Sunday, um, to our service, uh, on Sunday, uh, at eight o'clock English, um, 10 o'clock, uh, Spanish service. Um, let's be who we're called to be family. Amen. God bless you guys. Love you. And until next time, God bless.